There are three kinds of inverters commonly available in market. Square wave inverter, which is the simplest one and unfortunately the worst one. Because square wave is packed with a lot of higher frequency harmonics. Most of the electrical equipments we use in our daily days are not designed to handle square wave. Particularly the inductive loads never become happy with that kind of waveform. The better one is modified square wave inverter, but it also contains a lot of harmonics and causes very annoying humming sound and produces heat in many inductive loads. The most sophisticated one is the pure sine wave inverter. Although sadly enough, it is not actually the pure sine wave which we get from the grid supply, but it is generated from a special kind of pulse with modulated signal whose duty cycle is constantly varied as a sinusoidal function of time. That kind of PWM signal is called SPWM. After filtering the SPWM, we get the sine wave in the output. We can produce the SPWM signal using an Arduino and then we will increase the voltage to 220 volt using an H-bridge MOSFET configuration and a step-up transformer. So let's get started. First thing first, the Arduino program to generate SPWM. Here I am designing 50 Hz inverter with PWM carrier signal of 16 kHz. That means there would be 320 pulses in a complete sinusoidal wave cycle or 160 pulses in a half cycle. First I have calculated a lookup table containing the duty cycles of 160 pulses. Since the pulses in two half cycles would be symmetric, there is no necessity to storing 300 values. In the program, first the timer 1 has been set up in fetch correct PWM mode or mode 8 according to the data sheet. Digital pin 9 is connected to output compare register A and digital pin 10 is connected to output compare register B. In the first half cycle, D9 will produce pulses and D10 will stay at 0 volt, while the next half, D10 will produce the pulses and D9 will stay at 0. To do that, 1 1 has been loaded in COM 1A1 and COM 1A0 bits and 00, 0 in COM 1B1 and COM 1B0 bits. That is for first half or the positive half. Now to toggle the configuration in the next half, the 1s would be 0s and the 0s would be 1s. Simple. The prescaler of the timer is set to no prescaling mode to get highest possible resolution for the duty cycles. To get 160 pulses in 10 milliseconds, that is the half cycle of 50 Hz wave, the timer can count up to 500. So I loaded 500 in the register ICR1. We are almost done with the configuration part. Now load values in OCR1A and OCR1B with the first element of the lookup table. I need to change these values every time the counter reaches 0 in order to change the duty cycle of the pulses. According to the dataset in mode 8, the timer overflow flag is set when counter reaches bottom, that is 0 in this case. So I am setting the timer overflow flow interrupt enable bit in timer 1 interrupt mask register. In the interrupt service routine OCR1A and OCR1B are updated. Variable I has been declared as static int so that it is not reinitialized because it will be used as index to the lookup table array. The array contains from 0th element to 159th element, so when I reaches 160, it's reset to 0 again from where the next half cycle starts. It also produces a 0 crossing which can be recognized as a pulse blanking in the output. It's also the time for changing the configuration of output compare pins. In the loop function, both the transistors in the hub bridge 2 are turned off because no current is going to flow in the 0 crossing. In the next pulse, another flag is set named toggle hub bridge 2 and as it is detected in the loop, either high side or the low side transistor in the hub bridge 2 is turned on according to whether it is in positive hub cycle or in negative hub cycle. After uploading the code and connecting oscilloscope probes in D9 and D10, we can see the SPWM output. But while examining the pulses, I found that there is a problem. The pulse blanking is appearing on a wrong position. The pulse is supposed to appear on this channel. That means the zero crossing is happening one pulse before it should occur. By carefully checking the datasheet, I found the reason. The output compare registers update at the bottom of the counting sequence, which means the value I am loading now 
will actually be written to OCR register when the counter will be 0 for the next time. But by the time another interrupt will come. In simple word, I will be increased to 1 when 0 crossing will take place and I will be equals to 2 when hub bridge 2 will toggle. After uploading the modified code, I check the pulses again. Now it's perfect. Triggering pulses for hub bridge 2 coming from D11 and 12 are also fine. They have a distinct date time since I toggled from high side to low side or vice versa one pulse after the zero crossing. Date time is necessary to prevent the short circuit by triggering both the transistors in high side and low side at the same time. The circuit is very simple, 4 MOSFETs forming an edge bridge and to drive them 2 FAN 7392 high and low side gate drive ICs have been used. In the hub bridge 1, SPWM pulses are given, but in the hub bridge 2, 50 Hz pulses are given instead of the SPWM. This is because when the current in the transformer coil is suddenly turned off, it will produce a kickback voltage having opposite polarity to the switching voltage. Hence, a freewheeling current path is necessary. Let's say at a particular time, transistor M1 and M2 are on and they suddenly turned off at the same time. Now the transformer coil will produce a kickback voltage. To eliminate it, current should continue to flow in this direction. Most of the power MOSFETs including this IRF Z44 comes with an anti-parallel body diode. The diode D4 is forward biased in this case but D2 is reversed. So to allow the current to pass, transistor M2 must be kept on while switching M1. Similarly, M3 must be on throughout the time M4 is switching. In bootstrap, along with the 10 microfarad electrolyte capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic disc capacitor is used to reduce the ESR value as recommended in the datasheet. I have made this PCB to give it a cleaner look. The link for all the code, circuit diagram and PCB garbage files are given in the description. I have connected the circuit with 12 volt power supply and a 12 volt to 220 volt transformer. After applying the triggering pulses from Arduino pins D9 to D12 and 5 volt supply, we are ready to check the inverter output. The output is not yet looking like a sine wave. This is obvious because I forgot to connect any filter capacitor in the output. Now it's much better. And after applying the load, the waveform is looking even better. So in short, it was a successful attempt to make a simple 50 Hz pure sine wave inverter. To increase the load capacity, more MOSFETs in parallel to these four should be connected. And a larger battery and bigger transformer are necessary. I am working on a project to make a 350 watt inverter, including automatic changeover, charging and other necessary protection features. Once it is completed, I will upload all the design files, circuit diagram, code and the cost estimation. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet in the next video.